Hello everybody, Richard Michael Owen here with an amazing haul. We just bought this 1962 fixed head. It's been sitting since 1976. Yeah, it's lots of stuff piled up on here, but I think we got a good car. See the chassis number here, 885037, no, 5307, sorry. That makes it one of the first 500 cars. It's a flat floor, welded louver piece. See the nose here? A lot of dust on it. Man, this thing's been dormant for a while. But there you go. Welded louver coupe. How amazing is this? Yeah, today is a really good day. I'm just going to move Mosey on over here. We can see the back of it. And it looks good. I'm not going to lie. Look in the, in the belly pan area here. Of course, the gas tank's missing, but it looks pretty solid. Have a look there at the dashboard. The aluminum shining back at me. Yeah, there's a lot of potential with this car. It's been in BC here for like since 1968, I believe. So it's a local car to me. You definitely see those floors there. They're flat. There's no dishes in there. So yeah, what we're going to do is clear this up and let it see the light of day and get a look at this beauty. So it was originally a black car. And you can see the tan upholstery there that 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 upholstery strip is a giveaway for the original upholstery color and it looks like some of the original mohair there see up in the roof there we got everything for this car we've been hauling back tons of parts and loading up the car yeah i'm really excited what do you guys think let's get into it all right everybody welcome to own automotive we have the car back there on the hoist, the early flat floor coupe. Really excited about that. It's one of the best, most amazing E-types to come from my area. So it's a real privilege here to have it at the shop. And we're gonna take this opportunity to really go around it, see what we have, look through all the boxes, and build a plan for restoration on this car, because it is so very special, being essentially the 307th left-hand drive coupe. So I guess I'm going to go into the story of getting it out of where it was. When we first arrived at the shop, the only thing I could see was the hood. And I instantly looked and I could see it was the original hood with the welded louver. So I was really excited. I really wanted to take the car home. And luckily we were able to strike a deal. And after that happened, we peeled away the layers, slowly revealing the beautiful lines of the E-Type Coupe. And we got it out of there. The previous owner was really helpful. He had all the parts organized. We were able to load everything up in one go and bring it all up here back to the shop. So what can I say now here we are at the shop? Well, the most obvious thing is that, yeah, something landed on this car. Somebody's taking some screws in there, trying to pull it apart, maybe with a slide hammer and take this dent out. But it's only really possible from the inside with hammer and dolly. I was talking to Chuck at Monocock Metalcraft and he says, absolutely save that hood. It's totally irreplaceable. Having the original hood adds a lot more value to the car. And I agree with him. Um, just getting some access to behind this metalwork and tapping it out, I think is the way to go. Now these early cars, I'm not so sure they actually had silver in the sugar scoops, the headlight scoops here. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any black paint underneath this. This car was originally a black car with a tan interior. So this is the feature that I've been talking about, welded louvers. It's a welded louver car. So that doesn't really increase the specification. The only thing this does is really signifies that it's a very, very early coupe. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty neat. I think there were only 500 coupes with these, with specification like this, the flat floor and the welded in louvers. Now the hood itself, it, it isn't mounted properly. That's one thing we want to do is mount the hood properly. But I think the shape is really good. You know, I've seen a lot of E-types and you just know, looking at these lines and these curves, that this is correct. So I think this is a pretty straight hood. I think it's really good aside from that one dent. Windshield, not sure if it's original. All the chrome trim is off. You can see they just used some mastic in here, some like thick glue to glue the chrome onto the windshield rubber. And I think we have all that. We'll get into inventorizing that. If, hopefully this is the original windshield. It does have a few marks, but it'd be nice if it was original. Moving down the side of the car, the lines all look really good. No drama, definitely no major hits or anything like that. Now, as I do this, you can see some creases along the top of the door, see that? And that's because this is an early car. It uses a two-piece door skin. 
I'll open the door and show you guys what I mean. The door fits really nice. All the gaps are good. That's what I like to see. Even the swage line lines up. Very nice. Those things differ from car to car. So yeah, it's, if you can see here, if it pulls a focus, you can see it, the two-piece door skin. The way this works is that the door skin was made in two pieces. I learned all this from Chuck at Monocoque Metalcraft. And then they let it in between. And that's why we see it's not so perfect. We see some imperfections. That's original. Going to the rear of the car here. The hatch, the rear hatch fits nicely. Looks like all original, honest metal. There's been a slight tap. This bumper's creased in a bit. So just the, that's minor accident damage. The rest of it looks really good. We'll get into that in the belly pan. And similar side for the passenger. Similar story, sorry. You know, all the gaps are looking good. And yeah, so another thing I want to talk about is the paint. So this metallic green paint definitely is not the original color. You can see the original black here. And it may have actually had more of a gray or a white primer before the black, which I find really interesting. Has an antenna on here. Maybe it was fitted with original factory radio. I don't know. So yeah, we can see on the door handle here, there's the witness marks for the original black paint. Be nice to take this car back to its original color. And yeah, so the story goes that this car has been in storage since the 70s. And at that time, they were rebuilding the motor and maybe going to refurbish the car in some way. So we bought it partially disassembled. We've got the motor sitting here. We'll get into that for sure. And yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's a real privilege to be able to buy these things, find these barn finds, and work on cars that haven't been seen, haven't seen the light of day in many years. So I think let's go get into that interior. We'll have a closer look. Okay, let's have a look inside. I know that there's a lot missing, at least on the car, but I think we have everything in boxes. I guess the first thing I'll comment on are these seats. These are the early Roadster seats. The later ones, they widened them on the coupes, but they didn't do, do that until later in production. Yeah, we can see the original uh, rubber seals here just been petrified over age. Now, one thing I thought was pretty cool is this, is this uh, lubrication decal. And we can see in September 21st, 1974, it had 58,000 miles on it. And I don't think it accrued many miles past that. So we're likely looking at like a 58, 60,000 mile car here. And yeah, we can definitely see it was black underneath the door panel. And you've got this spl red splash panel here, red oxide. Inside, we could definitely see their flat floor. See that? Normally, on most other Jags, we'd see a dished floor here. And yeah, there has been some sort of uh, incident, I guess, there. You can see where the somebody's jammed their foot through the floor. So a bit of corrosion, but not a major amount. This car is remarkably solid. And also, somebody's been playing games with that accelerator pedal. Look at that bracket on there. So one thing I like about these early coupes is all the aluminum here. See the aluminum on the instrument panel. It's on the radio console and the main console itself. So it's nice that that's all intact and in the car. Really happy about that. Now somebody's put an oil gauge here. I guess they were having trouble with the original, but lucky for us, I think we saw the original oil gauge in the pile. I think this is an early style dash pad top. It's thinner. Unfortunately, this one's seen a bit of sun. And uh, yeah, it's cracked in the middle right there. So the original interior color was definitely tan. You can see the tan mohair here in the sun visors and up and in the roof, the cantrails and whatnot. It's nice to see all that intact. But yeah, pretty amazing stuff. An early e tape coupe. I just can't get over that uh, we have this now. It's so incredible. Got the rear hatch open here, and that really lets us see what the belly pan looks like. Now, almost all the components are missing out of here, which really gives us a window into this car. And this is a really important area to check for any, considering any E-type for purchase or restoration, because these belly pans always rust out around these strengthening ribs. And then furthermore, these rear panels in the back, it's really hard to hide accident damage, and that's what a nice straight one looks like. So this one's really good in both respects. Now we're definitely looking at a lot of belly pan here because the fuel tank's missing. It should be right here on that tan pad down there. See the fuel line over to the right. 
And these are the mounts for it. It's mounted on these rubber donuts. Nice to see those still included. And then the power comes from this fuse junction here. This black fuse junction is only on the very early cars. Another early feature is this cover. It gives access to the rear brakes. And while we're on a roll, these hinges are really early as well. They're much more basic than the cast units they made on the later cars. So we can definitely see the tan interior here. Places where they weren't able to spray their black uh, fabric paint. Of course, the seal's long gone. Now I think a lot of this stuff is original. So the mohair over the wheel arch and all these panels here, I think this is these are original panels, just spray painted black. And there shouldn't be carpet on this panel. I think it should just be vinyl. But really, if, when evaluating a car like this and seeing how solid it is here in the back with no accidents, that's a real bonus. Okay, next step is getting the front hood mounted and functioning. You can see the issue we were having here. This bracket is completely busted off. Look at that. So gonna have to get that replaced. Now to get those four bolts out that we're looking at, it's pretty tricky. There's a thread plate in behind there that's inside the nose. So we'll get access to that. Make sure all the threads are cleaned up, lubricated, replace this bracket, and hopefully we'll be on our way. Now this is the early style of bracket. Other cars do not use this uh, system at all. They just use a pin basically. And you can see that that bracket's really nestled in there. There's, it's really hard to shove in there. And uh, yeah, it was kind of a, a hard design to work with. So they changed it not long after this car was made. This old seal beam out. Nice. All right, next the sugar scoop's coming out. I have some seal to get rid of here. It looks like somebody's put some sort of mastic material in over a piece of rubber here. So I'll be working with this. Okay, let's see if this scoop's coming out. I think if I just push in, Threads back here. Should go down into the corner. Oh, there we go. We're in. All right, now if I just move the camera and the light, we can see we have access to those thread plates down there. Gonna be able to heat them up and clean out the threads. How about that? Sweet. a lot of heat but there's just no other way to do this really just putting a lot of heat into the thread plate close to the threads things are catching fire there a bit that's okay Whew, don't breathe deep guys don't breathe deep we got a lot of flame going on here the upper thread plate just right on the thread plate itself, so fine with this. Ugh, this just, the exhaust is what's no good. Yeah, got all those bolts out. Uh, thank you, Jaguar Gods. You can see the corrosion in there. I was only able to get these out with that heat in behind on that thread plate. Otherwise, I just would have busted these all off and made a big mess. So yeah, let's put the new hinge on. Okay, back down near the hinge pivot here, and we can see really the flaw of this design. I have the hinge here. So if this was attached to the hood, we couldn't just slide it onto here, it would, that wouldn't work. And if it was attached to the pivot, and we tried to drop this bodywork down on top, it wouldn't clear. So it's a fussy arrangement where we need to nestle it in here and get it installed like this. Now I have to I have it on the jack right now. I'm going to raise it actually a little more to get to those thread plates, but it's a real fussy kind of design. And I couldn't imagine having everything in perfect paint and trying to get this set up. But yeah, I'm going to attach this in here, then we can open the hood. 
Look at that, hinges in, made sure I got all those spacers in there, better believe it, and all the original hardware as well. That's the way I like to do things. Now, before I put it back together, I just wanted to comment on this area of the E-Type. So if somebody now wanted to do a proper repair with hammer and dolly, they have ample access in this headlight area to get in behind there and work this metal. Now, the sugar scoop itself looks really awesome. It's a beautiful shape. Cars that have been accidents, these always get take the brunt of it and they never get quite repaired. Now, this silver on here is bright silver that has been brushed on. That it's not original. What is original is this opalescent metallic gray paint here and that really shows the original color of this scoop it wasn't body color some of the early cars were body color but this one definitely had silver headlight scoops and for anybody wondering how this is fastened and how it's adjusted there are weld nuts on here see that nut and then a 1032 machine screw protrudes this one's missing quite like this and then it's spaced out. There's some spacers there. I think somebody just stuck some nuts on here. But originally there was round spacers on here that really helped this, um, what are you gonna call it? This leading edge coalesce nicely with the bodywork. All right, with that hinge in, we can see it really improved the gap to the cowl. That's a really nice fit there. And yeah, let's lift it up now and see what we got. It's stuck on that side. There we go. Now the center catch. Ho oh, ho, look at that. The hinges are catching, I guess. There it is. Whoa, look at that. Pretty dusty, could use a lot of cleanup. Wow, where do we begin? So I guess these uh, welded louvers, you can see it's definitely a separate panel here that's welded into the hood. Yeah, wow. Could use a lot of cleanup. It's been sitting without the hood on it for what looks like a long time. And now definitely can see the original battery helmets there the battery uh what do you call them connection terminals. points terminals and now there has been a bit of corrosion here you can see where the battery acid has just disintegrated the metalwork down in there so that's probably the point part of the car that needs the most repair you can see the black on the firewall here engine stay wiper motor it looks pretty good don't see any bends or kinks in the tubing Always look for cracks down here too. Looks pretty good. And of course the number on the picture frame, 85307, look at that. Looks really good up in here, the shape of the hood. Nice honest curves. These flanges on cars that have seen salt, they just rust away. So it's really nice to see those intact. Okay, here on the passenger side, one of the major things missing was the chassis identification tag. And luckily it came with the car and we're gonna put it on right now. Look at that, chassis tag is back in. See all the relevant numbers there. And yeah, this other side looks pretty complete. We have the wiper motor here. My dad says it was 61. Let's see if I can get a view of that. Look at that, 1961. So it's probably the original wiper motor. Now I think this little indent right here is also an early car feature, something to do with the braking system. They changed that on later cars. And it's interesting to see the way the wiring's done here for the wiper motor. It has this little clip. My gimbal would go in there. And yeah, the seal here seen better days. Awesome. Well, it's good to have that seal number tag in there. I think that's probably the most important part of the car. Now, these two screws here, where for the outside bonnet latches, they were 
this car didn't have outside bottle latches, but they hadn't changed the chassis yet, so they just filled them with some machine screws. All right, so next I wanna move on to everything that came with the car. We had a huge amount of boxes loaded in the truck. And just mentally to keep in track of everything, it seems like everything was there, but I wanna go through it all, see what we have, see what's original, and maybe decide on maybe what we might need to order. So the first part we're looking at here is the fuel tank. It was the biggest item out of the car, and this is definitely the original tank. I know this because it doesn't have gussets here on the flange that makes up both parts of the fuel tank, and these are exceedingly rare. Now this one looks like it's in pretty good shape. We'll go through a process of sandblasting at the inside, and, and we use a fuel tank sealer in there. I did it on my junk E-type, if you guys remember the, what that was like, and I think that's the way to go with this because it's nice to keep these things original if you can. Now we can see the original sender here. It was definitely painted black along with the fuel tank. And I can see that the factory just put a small piece of tape or something. See this small witness line where they just masked off the connections before they painted it. And of course the fuel pump is here. It's the submersed fuel pump and that's hiding underneath here. And it has uh, the power connection here that goes to it. So yeah, we're gonna try to save this tank if we can. Uh, let's move on to the next item. Okay, been pretty busy, emptied these boxes, and this is the result here. Lots of good original parts for this E-Type. I think the number one best part is this distributor. It's an early type distributor, and there we can see it was made in the third month of 61. So that's the body for the distributor. And we found a lot of the pieces for the distributor, all in various boxes, but it's nice to get that all together. I have a feeling as we go through more boxes, we're gonna find more for this car. There's the bellows for the brake system. Now we found some new old stock stuff. I think that the plan was to rebuild this car in the 70s, and that's when you could still get parts from Jaguar. And my dad's gonna help us look through some of this stuff. One is this fan motor, number 78378. And this is something you just never see. See that, a brand new fan motor. I've had three of these go in my own car, so a brand new one's like a gift. Pretty sweet piece. Still turns. And got a vacuum advance unit here, which is nice. Original vacuum advance unit. And we can have a look at that. Look at that, for the concourse judges. Authentic originals. Look at the service maybe part here. Maybe some screws in the bang or something. Well, it's already been undone, let's see what we got. Okay, this is like Christmas. So we got a new piece of hose, and we got a little spring for the end for the... Yeah, nice. I think that'll be going on the car. A new cap, I believe, and that's nice to see. Original Lucas cap there, screw-in type. Awesome. So moving on here, we can see we've got the oil filter housing. Somebody's put this hokey tape on there, so that's gonna have to come off. Um, we're building up the steering column. This is what we have for now, but I'm sure we'll find a lot more. Um, the carburetor dash pots here, they've been chromed. I think these should be can plated, but uh, it's nice to have the set of them, the original ones, the brass plated one, the brass ones, sorry. Oh, here's the steering knuckle for the steering, so I'll go there. And this is the, I think the felt like distance washer that helps locate the steering column. Now we're looking at the heater box here. This is definitely an early heater box because it has the larger aperture. It's definitely inappropriately painted, but it's nice to see all the original hoses with the original clamps, the original hardware, something I really like to see. Got the door handles. Now some of the original hardware as well. This is great, you know, bell housing hardware. Really nice to keep this car as original as possible. Moving along, we got the clutch hydraulics here and the fork, so that'll be nice. We even got the hose and the original clip that goes in the engine. Just stuff that's nice to have. Original pump, original pump bolts. We have the 
top bolts for the cover for the gearbox we found, the original speedo cable and right angle drive, assorted hardware. Yeah, we've found a lot of good stuff for this car already, but let's see what else we can find here today. Okay, we found the original vacuum um, diaphragm here, and it is a little different than the one provided that didn't quite get the right part. Look at that. This one, the original is a screw-in type, and it has a pin here instead of a spring on the end. So it looks like uh, this is gonna have to end up on maybe a 4.2. Of course, this unit goes into the assembly here of the distributor and, and the vacuum advance advances the rotor arm. What do we got? Damper top, damper piston cap, damper oh, yeah. pistons. Oh, for the for carbs. The carbs, yeah. Interesting. Okay, next box in is the washer bottle. These always crack because people just put water in there and not the proper liquid. And I think on that top of the motor there, there should be a date code, right? Oh, look at that. Second month of 61, wonderful. How does the, um, the filler plug look? Oh, quite nice, actually. I think that's going to clean up really good. And down in there might be some of the original tube. That's cool. And then what else do we got? We got some of the carb brackets, the last two. So that can join the carb, carb stuff over there. And got some good stuff in there. Nice. Made in Japan, it says. It's like Christmas here. All right. Well, they, it looks like junky hoses, but it's good in the fact that there's all the original Cheney clamps in there. That is really sweet. See, original clamps. So that's gonna be very useful, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a wrapped hose, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's more of an original style with that texture on there. But the original clamps, it's nice that people save this kind of stuff so we can make the car as original as possible. Uh, license plate light, those were removed from the car for some reason, so that's a nice pair. Now, I think the early ones were like a, like a, does it say there, is that a Lucas or a Butler? I think that some of them were Butler. I can't. No, Lucas. The Lucas, Lucas oh, England, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see some other things that we need in there. The indicator for the, for the. Oh, uh, the timing mark. For the timing, yeah nice you can go over with those okay next up we have the starter be nice if this was the original one i think it is it's the 10th month of 1961 there that's pretty sweet got the bolt to mount it yeah very nice it's really nice when you get all these components and they all are the original components to the car I think Dad's just bringing the generator here. I'll have to just give it a wipe to find the date on it. Oh, wouldn't that be nice if it had the original auxiliary components for the motor? Oh, we got the original hardware here. That's cool. Oh, I don't know if this is original. That spacer. Where are we looking here? Oh, it's dirty. Okay, we can't really find a date code on this generator but it looks like it might be the original one and the sticker on there but let's keep going we got another box here oh wow look at that so go fog oh window pillar chrome nice i was really worried that we didn't have these yeah they look good too i was reading actually that this shape changed actually mm -hmm. these are a match pair yeah that's great what else we got in there? You got uh, a steering wheel part here, look. Oh, another piece for the column. Oh, nice, even, is that? Yeah. Snap rings the in there. Snap rings in there, that's good. So we'll put that over with the rest of the column pieces here. I wanna get that in the car so we can move it around. These are the two little collets for it too. Oh, the collets, perfect. Okay. Oh, look at fog light, eh? Fog light. <laughs> okay. Original wipers. Oh, three of them. Whoa, you got some triplex rainbows on there? That's neat. Wonderful. I don't think you can get these um, inserts anymore with little dots on them. Mm -hmm. 
It's like a backup light. That's great to have. Nice. Yeah, Mouse was trying to live in there or something. Doing some chewing. And oh, I see more of the steering column oh, parts. Yeah. I don't recognize that. Somebody was playing games there. I don't think that's Jaguar E type. <laughs> no, it's kind of got a Japanese look to it. Yeah, but I think that I see some spline head down there for oh, the yeah, steering column that. and the horn contact. This is what we were really hoping for. Oh, sweet. There we go. There we are. Horn contact looks a little bent, but yeah, this is a really key part to get this steering column back together. That's very good, isn't it? And uh, some interior pieces, clock reset, and tack reset, odometer reset, sorry. Nice. We also got the trans mount here. It's the early style trans mount. It doesn't use a spring. It just uses two rubber bushes. Yeah, some reset. Clock and speedo, eh? Yeah. Oh, we got the cooling fan. So that'll be a good mate to that original new old stock uh, motor over here. Jaguar Jamer, this is brand new. That's brand new? Yeah, I thought of its original bag look. What? It's a brand new one. Yeah. So what's the finish on that? Is that CAD plated or painted? It looks shiny CAD, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's the way they should be. They shouldn't be painted. They should be CAD plated. Okay. On this car. <laughs> okay. Got some old mirrors. Wall press. The wall press mirrors. Uh -huh. The yeah. hood was drilled for them too. They must have been on it. Got the chrome surround. That's nice. And the glass, some with a seal for it, maybe. Looks like ignition wire. Uh, you can see if it's original. It should have the triplex. Yeah, it does here. It's gonna be hard to see, but uh, I won't pull a focus. Uh, there it is, triplex. Nice. So it's an original glass uh, little, cover. Little dots under the T. Little dots under. The, I don't know what that means. I do. What does that mean? It's the date. No, which? Oh, you don't know which year it is. I think it starts off 61, 62. Oh, wow. Around, so it's a 1961 piece. Uh -huh. Beautiful. That's great. Now, here we have the radiator assembly. This is cool. So these early radiators are a lot different than the later ones. They're kind of a aluminum sandwich. don't know if you can see here down the side. I think these are from a company called Marston Excelsior. Got a tag here. <laughs> Not really apparent. And also here we have the fiberglass shroud for that single bladed fan. A little bit of damage here on the bottom. That's unfortunate. Now, I don't know if this radiator is gonna be reusable. I see some putty in here, so there was likely a leak. So there's a good chance that we won't be able to reuse this radiator. But they're such a unique part of the early E-Type. Look at that. The, um, the header tank's kind of built in to the matrix. So even the replica versions don't look anything like the original. Don't know if I could see a date code on here, but definitely it's some stampings. So yeah, a bit of a question mark what to do with that. Uh, big box, what do we got? Oh, the carbs. Oh, wow. That's nice. So balance tube, coolant pipe, a linkage, on. linkage for the carbs. Ignition wires. <laughs> Look at the holder. <laughs> you know, somebody's having fun. Oh, this is good. The original biscuits here with the chrome holder. That's the good part of that whole thing. These biscuits. Oh yeah. The separators. They'll be original. Separators. Separators. Looks like all three HD8 carbs are here. This is what I like to see. With the tag still on there. And we know we have the damper units. Got the fuel line, uh, some various hoses. Yeah, this is a good box. This is a really good box. What about that coil? Let's have a look at that coil there. Ooh, yeah, oh, dipstick as well is hiding there. Look at that coil here. 
see what, I think these are dated. Oh, nice to get the brackets, both brackets. That's pretty important. It's painted gold. And what, what does it say? So it's an HA12, so it's of an original type. Eighth month of 64, so it was a replacement, but an original replacement. That's neat. The pulley, aluminum, not steel. I like to see the dipstick in here too. The original dipstick, that's great. Wonderful. The original coolant pipe's under there as well. The original coolant pipe, it's right here. Got the fuel rail and these are cadmium plated, I believe. Really nice to have all this stuff with this car. <laughs> Quite the unit when it's like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This would be the center car, right? I think. Oh, yeah, and the, they got the vent tubes. Vent tubes on. That's a tag look. Yeah, got the tags on all of them. That's the rear one. Yeah, a, this is the rear one, not the middle. Hmm? Oh, it had the wrong tag on it then. Oh. Another carb there. Center, it says on this one. It could be the carb is just on the wrong manifold, maybe. Oh, well, people don't put these tags on the right order. Oh, yeah. a lot. Looks yeah, like a lot of important there. linkage here that is, uh, you hate to have to source. Okay. There you go. Okay, so the original door caps. See the the tan interior, the tan color, the original tan color, and somebody's brushed on some black paint here. And you see, the, there were, it was a red oxide piece, and it had the material upholstered around it. And we see that what they English call draft excluder here, <laughs> the felt that the window runs against. Nice pieces to have, but it's a shame somebody took the black paint to the main. Mm -hmm. So then the transmission cover, now the original transmission cover on the early E-types, this is it, it was plastic. And you can see the result of the plastic in the heat cycles, it just cracks and disintegrates. So hopefully somebody's gonna reproduce this in the future because I don't think this is immediately available. It definitely was a white color, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. The white mastic, see the white mastic was holding it down. All right. Then we got the exhaust heat shield. So you gotta be, oh yeah, you can see, still see asbestos in here. So anybody that's working on these, be careful. This is asbestos. And this is nice. The intake uh, plenium, the air filter plenium, housing, whatever you wanna call it. Now, I think this one's different slightly from the later ones. It's this, this is a thin edge. It had a thicker flange on the later versions. It shouldn't be gold. It's, I think it should be like a gray, see there? Gray color, pull a focus. Something of the later cars in 04.2, this is hammer tone, but this is an early car, so it's hard to really know. Maybe we can, uh... oh, here we go, there it is. So that's the original finish if we clean that up. It does look like a slight hammer tone. They say hammer tone, but I think it's kind of just the way that metallic paint went on when, you, when they put it on thick. But definitely was like a silver metallic, wasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. a little pocket. Blobby. That's just what, that's what happens when you paint silver a little thick. Single stage silver metallic. Okay, then we have the ashtray unit in there, which is cool. Now, it definitely looks like it was tan. It was a tan ashtray unit painted black. That's nice to have, original stuff. Okay, so here's the console. We can see the dotted pattern here. And the original dotted pattern has a rough texture in behind it that the reproduction aluminum doesn't have. But here we have an A-track. So this thing's been hogged out for an eight-track. And uh, look at this, this <laughs> upholstery on this side. Whew. Yeah, this eight-track's got a lot of mechanical function to it. We just found the harmonic balancer, crankshaft damper, and then we got the flywheel as well here. Some bags, look like I already put, we put some stuff in Ziploc bags already. So I've got cylinder head studs, and looks like some flywheel bolts. And here's the flywheel. 
Let's see if it's the original flywheel. Look at that. Okay, we're upside down here. Bear with me. So here we go. Pull a focus. What does it say? 2938. Can you see that? So this is the original flywheel to the engine, which is pretty sweet. Looks like it maybe has been resurfaced. Got a clutch disc there, probably some asbestos. And a pretty fresh looking um, Borg and Beck spring pressure plate. Look at that in the metallic green. That's pretty neat. Looks new, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It's an unusual color. And then we have the bell housing here, which is great. And the original reservoirs. Wow, for the braking system. So this is the early round style. See the Sovi um, caps on there. That's fantastic. Got the asbestos in behind there again. It's a heat shield. And looks like all of the braking hydraulics. So the original master cylinders, that's sweet. So on a car like this, you want to keep it original. There's date tags here on them in aluminum. And looks like all the original harbors on there. Got the clevis pins even. This is really awesome. So like you see on the tags here, 11th month of 61. So it looks like, like, like some original hydraulics. I'll just note on these um, reservoirs here, it looks like the finish on this was cadmium. Just see a little bit of it right there in the corner. Oh, got the, got the clamps, the original hoses with the yellow line on it. This is great. Motor mounts have seen better days. It's got a new front seal, new hard front seal. And the bell housing looks pretty good, doesn't it? Oh. Nice looking unit. I bet you these brackets are black oxide. Mm -hmm. There's a little tab for the spring one. Oh, the spring, yeah, for the clutch master. Mm -hmm. Clutch slave, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we have anything else? Is that everything? No. We have more. Yeah. Yep, more parts, holy. So the drive shaft, that's really incredibly awesome to have. The header tank. These are the first things that rust out on any E-Type. See the otter switch on there? We're going to need a new one of these. Got the hardware there, though. That's pretty cool. The original rad cap, maybe. Yeah, there's a lot of junk in there. That's going to be no good. Oh, oh, oh. Making a mess. Got the manifolds. Exhaust manifolds. Funny color. Looks like you can see the original porcelain on there. Those are the flanges. That one's okay. Oh, the rear one is no good. It's missing a part of its flange there. You can see the porcelain. It just does not hold up over time. And on original cars, this is about how much usually is left, if any. Okay. We also got with this car a lot of this chrome pieces. And if you're missing the, any of these pieces for an E-Type, you know what a pain it is to get them remade. These are the finishers for the window above and below, both front and rear. We got all four pieces there. That is like a real blessing. And we got the gutter pieces here, the strips for the rear upholstery. This is really amazing. Really thankful that this came with the car because they're going to be really hard to acquire otherwise. Awesome. That's amazing, all that chrome, really. Oh, got some of the major gauges. What does it say for mileage there on that Speedo? 32,000. Let's have a look at the other side here. They look nice, they don't look corroded. A lot of the roadsters see a little bit of moisture in the interior and so the back of the gauges really corrode out. Oh look, this one has a date on it. In pencil. It looks like it was made uh, in 61 there. One slash 12 slash 61. Wow, that's nice. Got the clock in there too, the removable clock. 1961 December. 
Looks like it would clean up pretty nice. Oh yes, the steering wheel. Uh, this is a real thing of beauty. You can see here it has the aluminum strengthening piece running all the, the running the extent of the wheel, and it's uh, differently shaped than the later ones. Uh, this steering wheel looks amazing. It's never I don't think it's been polished. Well, maybe it has. Interestingly enough, there's this extra line here too. Maybe actually a factory mistake. I'm not sure. But yeah, this steering wheel is amazing. It's going to clean up real nice. It has a satin finish to it. Looks kind of like mahogany, doesn't it? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, mahogany. One button's in good shape. Yeah, very nice. Okay. All right, best for last. We have the original two overall. Look at that. So this is what pretty much original two rolls looked like. This, it was a canvas that had this, that was rubberized. So the rubber always is disintegrating. Now we did take a peek at this earlier. It isn't a complete two roll, but it has a lot of the parts. So that's pretty nice. We have the, all the wrenches for it. The box spanners, the feeler gates. So we are missing a few pieces. If you guys have anything like the little adjustable wrench, please let us know. We would love to complete this. Well, I guess that's it. That's quite the haul. This car came with a lot of stuff. It just goes to show when you get buying a car and it's taken apart just how much stuff you might need. I really enjoy the fact that we have, I think, the original starter and generator distributor, a lot of date-coded parts that are original to this 1961-62 car. And yeah, it's going to be a real joy refinishing, refurbishing these pieces and putting them back in the car. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Look at all that stuff. Got our work cut out for us, that's for sure. Now let's get into the engine and the cylinder head here. It appears to us like there was a major rebuild underway that just never got completed. The cylinder head was almost completely ready to install on the block. So that gives us a pretty unique insight to have a look at what was being rebuilt and how it was done. But before we get into that, and if we've got to look beyond this hideous white paint, let's get into the identification first. So right by the oil filter adapter here, we can see R2938-9. You can't really see the nine there for compression. This is the original block to the car, which is really amazing. It's nice to have that. And then if we look at the cylinder head here, it has the matching engine number in the V, R2938-9. So how sweet is that? Pretty amazing when people are doing really high dollar restorations like JLR, they really want cars like this that have matching numbers, engine and cylinder heads. So that's really sweet. So yeah, as I said earlier, this engine was under a full rebuild. If we look closely here, we can see there's 30 thou over pistons, C plus 30 there. And so that means this engine's been bored out. The sleeves, see the sleeves here? They've been bored out 30 thou new pistons put in, probably with new rings and bearings, but I'm just assuming that. And that's a, that's a perfectly acceptable way to fix these engines. In fact, you can go up to 40 thou on these sleeves. Now, just looking at the top of the block here, what we call the deck, I don't think it's ever been machined, any surface straightening going on, because when I look at the grading stamps for the bores, they're still intact, nothing's happened to them. So this is the original deck, nothing's happened there. It looks like the timing was completely redone, which is nice. So we've got new chains on here, new guides. You can tell they're new guides because there's a lot of meat here, see that? And it looks like somebody was being careful. They were definitely signifying when they were torquing down the nuts. That's nice to see that due diligence. This all looks nice and intact. Timing cover looks good. Water pump area doesn't look all um, corroded like some of them do and just all the original brackets and the original nuts and bolts that's nice to see these should be in black oxide kind of like the ones up here and the last thing about this engine that makes it pretty special is the sump here the aluminum oil sump this is an early smooth case sump the later ones were ribbed for cooling and also the later ones were more built up around the flange this is a pretty thin flange and it was pretty susceptible to cracks and damage. So they beefed this up in the later designs, but it's nice to see that early crankcase fit into this motor. So going on to the cylinder head here, I'll show you guys what this looks like on the other side. It really tells a story. I see new valves, 
I see that it's been decked nice and flat. I see that the water passages are intact with no corrosion. So this cylinder head here really passes with flying colors already. But while we're sitting here, while it's on the bench, let's have some fun. Let's take these cam covers off and see if they got the valve clearances correct. It's stuck on these down here. I, I no no actually hold on. There it is. The cam looks pretty clean. Oh, pretty dirty under here. Look at it in here. <laughs> they didn't really clean it out. Some spider nests in there too. Okay, I got those cam covers off. We can see the camshafts here. This looks like maybe an original camshaft. You see the part number there? C14138. Another great thing about this cylinder head is it comes with all of its original cam caps. You can see they're kind of stamped here. X02 and X02 stamped on them. So that's really nice to see. I don't know about this exhaust camshaft. It has holes on the box, on the back side of the lobe. So I'm not sure if this is the original camshaft. We'll have a look when we turn them over. Now I can't turn either of these over without removing one because it's an interference engine. So we're gonna remove a cam, then probably put some assembly lube in and around all these assemblies, and we can check our valve clearances. All right, look at that. Make sure I got it on site here. You can, we can see the number C13081. So this is the original exhaust camshaft. Interesting how the exhaust side is drilled and the intakes aren't. So now with this camshaft out, we can safely rotate the intakes one. So I'm looking at the cam followers, the tappets, they look new. I can see the old camshaft bearing in here, not a huge fan of that, but on a budget, it's fine. So let's lift this up. Uh, oh, look at that, it actually is used. So maybe these were refaced. Now inside here in the bucket, we see we got the shim, the small shim that sets the valve clearance. So depending on the measurement, which we'll be taking on the intake side, we use different shims to get our valve clearance. It sits there right on like that. In fact, you can see an impression on this one. This one's used, and you can see where the valve has just been striking this thing in between the sandwich of the valve and the tappet. Back over to the intake side here, just run assembly loop on the lobes. I made sure that none of the exhaust valves were stuck, so they're all seated, so we're not gonna collide. And now we're free to rotate this intake. There it is. Look at that. Some more. And next I loosened off and I just want to torque these to 10 foot pounds, these cam caps, because there's no way to get an accurate measure unless they've been torqued down properly. Okay, here we are on intake valve number six, number six being closest to the timing. So we Jaguar did it. Just gonna put it so that the lobe is pointed upwards and we actually should have a gap of about four thou between this tappet, it's spinning, that's a good sign, and the back of the lobe itself. I see a little five written here, so likely we have five thou clearance. Just gonna stick a five thou feeler gauge in there. And oh, that feels good actually. I think that would be correct. Just judging by the amount of friction I get for moving it from side to side here. Yeah, that's definitely five thou. If I tried to put six in there, it's probably not going to go. Yeah, look at that. So that's five thou. This one's set up correctly. I mean, we could go four thou. We could do another step here and try to make absolute perfection out of it. But I think within a thou is fine. Yeah, that's a good sign. 
Okay, all done. This cylinder head is looking really good. It's passing with flying colors. We have 777666 for our gaps on the exhaust side, which is terrific. Generally, when these when the valve train wears, it makes these gaps smaller. So that'll set in just fine. Same story here on the intake side. 556, five, which is a little large, but it's passable. Five, four, and a five. So as it was set up, I think this cylinder head would just run fantastic on the block. Checked it, for, checked it for trueness. It's totally level and flat, which is nice. My dad also checked it for the deck and he measured it, it was 4.875 inches thick. That's this thickness here. And uh, that means it only has 10 thou off the deck, which is really nice as well. So overall, a very good presentation. I mean, just cleaning all these cam covers and throwing them on, you'd probably have a nice running car. If you wanted to go a little more thorough, I'd say probably new shims, maybe even new tappets. I don't know about grinding tappets. What do you guys think? But yeah, overall, a very nice cylinder head. It's nice to see one that's not warped, not screwed up. A lot of the original components here, we've got the original bolts, washers, and de-washers. I like to see that. So yeah, really happy with this cylinder head. All right, here's the final shot of the car. This is gonna wrap up the video. I mean, how can I sum this up? This is obviously a very good restoration candidate. And everybody's wondering what we're going to be doing with this car for now. It's going in the family collection. We'll have a look at that engine and that cylinder head. Get that all together. I think that'll be the next step for this car. But yeah, it's staying with us here in BC. It's not for sale currently. And it is a really special car. I'm really grateful to have cars like this in my life and be working on them here at the shop. And really this shows that they're out there. They made a lot of Jaguars, a lot of coupes, a lot of roadsters. And they're out there. So keep looking, everybody. All right, well, that does it for this video. As always, if you have any tips, tricks, comments, or trade secrets, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. All right, that's it. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.